Hello friends, in today's class, we'll be studying about the most important device in electronics that is PN junction diode or simply called as diode. Fun fact, this is the device that has revolutionized the digital electronics world. So let's begin. <music> semiconductor diode now di means two and old means terminals so semiconductor diode is a semiconductor device which is having two terminals now it is fabricated like this here you can see we have p type semiconductor this is p type semiconductor and here you have n type semiconductor now, how would you identify that? Well, in p-type semiconductor, you can see you have positive charges or holes as majority carriers and in n-type, you have electrons as majority carriers. Now, you would bring them together and join it. Now, how would you join this? Well, this is not joined by using an adhesive tape or some glue or some kind of an adhesive thing, but they are the single element or a single wafer of which one side is doped with P-type impurity and one side is doped with N-type impurity. So in Viva, if examiner asks you which substance you use to adjoin two types of semiconductors, well, the answer to this is you don't use any adhesive tape. You take a single wafer and on the other side you dope it with P-type and hence it leads to the formation of N-type semiconductor and P-type semiconductors. Now, when they are joined or when you can say when they are diffused, at the junction you have positive and negative charges merging. Well, if both positive and negative charge merge, they would mean a net neutral charge and hence the charge in this zone would become equal to zero. This is how it takes place. Now, the question could arise, why it does not happen all across the material? Well, this is because of the weakening electric field. You just need to remember this that at the center, the electric field by both of the sides would be minimum. And as you go far away, it would be very difficult for the electrons at the farthest end to merge and form a net neutral charge. So what happens in this region? Well, this region is now called as depletion region. Depletion means lacking. So this region is lacking of net carriers. So as you can see, there are neither the positive nor the negative. This region has no charges. So this is how a P-type and an N-type semiconductor unite to form a depletion layer in between. A semiconductor diode is an electronic device and it has a specific symbol. This symbol is appearing like this. This part is P-type and this part is N-type. This is also called as anode and this is also called as cathode. So this is how your diode looks like or you can see this is the symbol of diode. Now a diode can be biased. Now what is biased? Well. How can the diode be biased? Well, this is done by using different type of polarities at P-type and N-type. Now, let's recall the PN junction diode, which has a depletion region and I have a battery. I've connected the P end with the positive terminal and N end with the negative terminal. This is the positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative terminal of the battery. Well, positive terminal means it is having lots of positive charges and negative terminal means it is having lots of negative charges. This is the analogy that we will be using to study the biasing of diodes. Now, this positive charge will repel the positive charges and force them to go towards the depletion region and of course the same thing is going to happen with the electrons. The electrons will be repelled by the negative charges of the negative terminal and hence there would be a force which is pushing both the positive carriers or the holes and the electrons or the majority carriers towards the depletion region. They will then come closer and hence the depletion region would 
go off so in forward bias your depletion region goes off and therefore your device begins to conduct now why it couldn't conduct well the answer to this is as you see in the depletion region there was no carrier so if there is no carrier there is no zone of electricity transmission so hence you can say that in de if depletion region minimizes to zero then only you can have current to be passing well you can idealize this thing by taking another example of reverse biased now what is reverse bias again i'll be taking the same pn junction diode now this time i have inverted the battery or I, you can say i have reversed the polarity of the battery p is connected to the negative terminal and n is connected to the positive terminal this is negative terminal and this is positive terminal well in this case the holes on the p side would get attracted towards the negative terminal and electrons on the n side would get attracted towards the positive terminal the forces would be like this now because of this attraction your charges would be moving further apart will now your depletion region has widened the depletion region is now this as you can see here the gap is widened so now it becomes difficult to fill this gap for the electricity conduction so how would you remember this well for forward bias and reverse bias it is very easy to remember we'll call forward bias as fb and reverse bias as rb we'll use the analogy of a river these are the two banks separated by a river and this is the river this is the bridge here you can see if you want an electron to pass this bridge then only you can reach to the other end well in other words if you are able to pass this bridge then only you can reach the other end if the bridge is small enough it would be easier and if this bridge would be wide enough it would be difficult so in forward bias your bridge gets narrowed whereas in reverse bias your bridge gets widened so this is how we are going to remember the biasing of semiconductors diode well, thank you so much for watching this video. For more content, stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.